So let's check out some vocals. I don't think I've actually showed off any of these little vocal tricks before. What I generally like to do is have one to three main center channels, and then I will have left A, right A, left B, right B. So two sets of stereo tracks. So our first set of stereo tracks are panned like semi-wide, and then our second set of stereo tracks are panned ultra-wide. Two screams on our little stereo track, one up the center, and then for the verse thing, it's just me yelling, no extra nothing. For the arf arf, we used all of our tracks and just bombard everyone with sound. And then once again for the yeah, we have like basically nothing, just the one track. And then counting worms and bleh, we use all of our tracks to try and make it sound humongous. So we get something like this. I hate playing unprocessed vocals, but here we are. No! So pretty terrible to listen to. Uh, so let's put some effects on that guy. So the first thing I'm doing is I am running this through Crazy Transformer Distortion. And I'm doing it in parallel. So it's not entirely distortion. Probably three quarters distortion and then uh, some without in there. So that gives us this. Without. I'm not getting paid! With. I'm not getting paid! Just gives us a little extra oomph, you know? Uh, then from there, Anne, 1176, where I have our attack is just immediate. Our release is pretty quick. Our ratio is on 12, and we're just really pinning this guy. From there, we're running into a 3A. So this is a similar idea. Remember the bass? where we did an 1176 into the uh, LA-2A. Now we're doing the LA-3A, but it's basically the exact same idea. We're just kind of gently gluing it from that 1176, which was uh, catching the huge peaks. Now we're just kind of making sure everything's a little chiller. Without... And that's pretty much it for that. So now what I'm going to do is get rid of some of my icky vocal tones. I never knew that this was a thing when I started doing vocals, and I actually really messed myself up because I was like, I shouldn't be hearing any tone. But that being said, actually, that doesn't quite apply to this because the whole point of this is that it sounds like I'm yelling our EQ. I'm bringing up uh, a little bit of my, I think, consonant range, basically. And then I'm just trying my darndest to get rid of a bunch of whistle and also my vocal talking voice frequency. So before our EQ. And then after. Basically, what I'm doing is just completely getting rid of all of my... From there, side widener. I love putting side widener on vocals. A little extra movement and a little extra info. All right, that being said, I literally just copy and paste all of those vocal settings onto the rest of the vocal tracks. Most of the times I will turn my stereo pairs down just a little bit, but that's pretty much it for that. So that gives us... So <laughs> what are we doing here? I'm pretty sure I did lows straight down the middle. Oh yeah, and there's some very nasty voicey stuff happening there. <laughs> and 
that's pretty fun. I like that. And then we have our little stereo images, which I'm pretty sure is going to be high-ish. Nope. It looks like I've put an EQ on these kind of pig squeal things. And yep, as I expected, I'm just kind of pulling some whistle out. Or that's not whistle, actually. That's that's like vocal frequency. Sounds very strange, but it sounds great in the mix. And that's kind of how metal vocals work in general. So now we're on our super stereo, and this is gonna be high screams. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> all right. So put it all together. Isn't it just beautiful? So all of those vocals make their way into master, bus, and then we do all of this stuff. So as you can see, I'm adding a bunch of low end back because I got rid of all of it because I was trying to pull my voice out. This is me probably pulling a little bit of whistle out. And then this is me doing some lazy DSing. So uh, FabFilter Pro Q3 has a dynamics mode, which is, oh my God, it's amazing. Uh, so basically whenever this EQ band right here gets signal that's within a certain frequency, it'll duck it. Before. And after. Yeah, it sounds like I was getting rid of some kind of air, extra air. And if you get rid of some air on metal vocals, it definitely will make them sound more powerful because it's less, it seems like less air is coming out, which indicates to you that it's harder to do or something like that. I don't know. Leave me alone. Okay, so we are from there sending all of these already insanely compressed vocals into a master bus compressor with a slow attack and a quick release as always. And this is once again, just to get all of our transients sitting in the same place. Let's see what we got on these less metally vocals. As you can see, not hitting it very hard because it's just the one track. And then once we hit this arf arf, it'll be all the tracks. And as you can see, it jumped to like four dB. Guess what? Yes, yes. That's right, it's decapitator time again. Full mix. Uh, this is our tape saturation mode, and we're just throwing even more saturation in there. This setting, I've found at least, it seems to saturate our mids kind of more than anything else, and it also leaves transients kind of intact, whereas the rest of them seem to kind of clip them off. Let's go back to our more metally scream part. Without, and then here's with. Might just sound better because it's louder, who knows? I like to destroy my CPU with a thousand plugins. So this part I think is huge on vocals of any kind, screaming or singing, harsh or clean, whatever you wanna call them. I have another multi-band compressor going and this is basically the same idea as what I was doing with the bass. The very lowest band is as high up in the bass frequencies as it can go and I have a gigantic range on it so that it just catches as much as it can and we get a nice consistent bass. Because obviously if you're doing high screaming, low screaming, all that kind of stuff, it's gonna vary wildly. And instead of doing an insane amount of automation, let's just make it easy and catch it and just squash it. We've added a good amount of harmonics and kind of extra stuff there so that you can actually hear things in the bass. But normally a scream like that in that range on that note, you wouldn't really hear anything there. So that's kind of the whole idea. So then we get our mid. I'm not hitting this as hard. But basically the idea is we just have successfully squashed everything.
And it's basically the same attack release settings on all of these. It's around 40 attack and then 50 release. So our high mids, generally a problem area, a lot of harsh vocals. It's where a lot of your whistle is and a lot of just So I'm hitting that pretty hard. That's what she said. And that's where a lot of your consonants are and all of that. So that's an important bit. And the nice thing is that just kind of exists as a consonant slider, basically. Last thing, and I go absolutely crazy on this, is our high band. Very quick attack, very slow release, and I have the range set like crazy. So basically, this is acting as another de-esser, and then also just making sure that we have this nice, crispy air kind of sound going on the whole time. And it's also nice because if you do it like this, then you essentially have your uh, de-esser like a mixer basically you can be like oh well i want more s so i'm just gonna turn up this so yeah very helpful after that because i am a crazy person i'm sending all of that into a limiter just ruining it to kind of help deal with any volume discrepancies that we have from having more or less tracks doing vocals at once. No! Whoa. So yeah, that is our big main vocal stuff. And now from there, we've got a couple little extraneous maneuvers.